Let's go. Welcome to Can We Talk Sports. My name is Arisha, AKA Icy. And I'm Carmen, AKA Mama D. And today we have a special guest um, with us. Um, if you've thought about what happens after uh, an athlete leaves the sport, um, Jonathan Haggerty has a lot of information um, of how you can turn that experience into helping youth and getting them on the right path. So, have you thought about that? Yeah, I actually dealt with it a little bit firsthand myself with my own kid, but that is a serious topic that a lot of kids, a lot of student athletes do not take in consideration. I think it's something very important to discuss. Right. What happens after football? What happens after football? Mm -hmm. Life after football. Right. Whether it's <laughs> short, short lived, or a long career, football doesn't last forever. So in that case, today's segment to me is going to be something very important that's educational for parents and student athletes. Okay. So being that I've dealt with that firsthand with a son that has dealt with, he went from being the man mm -hmm. all through high school, had a great college career, starting out, you know, it kind of declined, it fluctuated, had to do some transferring, but he was blessed enough to still get, he got drafted, und, was an undrafted free agent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything's going good. Training camp, OTAs, etc. You make it through, you got two big articles, and you're just like an undrafted free agent. But then all of a sudden, you go back for training camp. You wasn't there 24 hours and you're cut. Never got another call from another team. But the hope was there because of the, the talent or whatever. But for some reason, it just did not happen for him like some of the other guys that got cut. Mm -hmm. So, therefore... You know, me, I'm a dreamer. I'm, I'm like, oh, it's going to come, it's going to come. There's no way you came this far, whatever. So your whole goal to me as a parent, I'm a motivator. So I just try to keep him positive and motivated. My son, I believe, was a guy that he didn't like to show the emotion as much. So he was, you got to be careful and pay attention to it because to me, they go into a depression. Mm -hmm. He held it in. He held it in. He was suppressing it by staying busy doing other stuff or just hanging out, or just playing video games or whatever. But now, but you gotta do more than that. You gotta be motivated and do other stuff. I mean, he continued to work out for a while, but I started seeing that decline. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that after a while, mentally, me starting, you know how you know your kid, mm -hmm. I'm working out for what? Mm -hmm. That's where I think it went. He got, you know, back motivated, new league started, he gets called. Mm -hmm. Everything's great, boom, the league goes bankrupt. So this time it was, I'm doing everything right, but these bosses can't come to an agreement. Everybody's just, I mean, everybody, it affects. So it affects not just parents, but it affects. But my whole time, I just felt like, oh, you're gonna be back in the league, even to this day. Mm -hmm. Like right now he's playing arena in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but I still feel like there's an opportunity as long as he's, because at the end of the day, it's not just on the teams, it's on the player too, to do their part. Right. So yeah, as. That's my experience as a parent and what my role was. I never got depressed or sad about it. I just kept saying, do this. I, Look, you going this and that. I'm the, sometimes they'd be like, mom. <laughs> but I believe that you can do it as long as you really drive and do what you're supposed to do for it. Right. Because we're the cheerleader. Yeah, we have we to be. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, my experience, my kids, um, my oldest daughter played professional volleyball in Germany, uh -huh. which mom loved because I love traveling and uh -huh. I, I would I would pack my stuff and go to Germany, you know, for yeah. for a week. Wow, yeah. um, so I love that. I loved it. But when she was done, I was like, if you're done, you know, yeah. you're yeah. done. Uh -huh. You know, and she was contemplating going back. They wanted her to come back, but she felt like she needed to get something solid yeah. in the United States. But she loved Germany. Um, but you know what, when she went away to Germany, I went through withdrawals. Like I loved volleyball. And at that point when she went to Germany, I started being a volleyball official. Oh, like wow. I, I needed the sport. I needed it. Um, and to this day, I'm still an, an official. And when my son stopped playing football, oh man, 
when he, 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 he never had the desire to play football in the NFL. And he had the size, he had the build and everything, but that was just, he wrote a um, essay in the sixth grade that he wanted to get a scholarship to play football. Um, so his mom and dad didn't have to pay for college. Oh. And that was his goal, you know. He, when, he, when he mastered that, he was done, he was good. So we, I still, I follow football, I still go to games and I, I love football. So I, I go through withdrawals, but you know what? I'm still the biggest cheerleader, whether it's football or it's buying a new house or, you know, they, they've gone on with their lives. So. Yeah. Yeah, but there's exciting. life after football, so absolutely, you have to absolutely. just be mentally prepared for it. Absolutely. And I think we're going to see that today with Jonathan. I think he's going to tell us about life after football. Well, you know, I've always been um, passionate about, you know, helping people, you know. And after pretty much my first NFL team, I noticed that you know, my coaches and, and people uh, of my support system, they were like, hey, you'd be really great at speaking uh, to different uh, groups of young men and young women. Everybody welcome former Cleveland Brown, New England Patriot, Chicago Bear, motivational speaker, fitness trainer, Jonathan Haggerty. Yeah, yeah. I see you all clean over here. You right. just really came in here and got yes, all iced out on us and with the football. And... Hey, well, y'all looking beautiful yourself. Oh, you. Know. Hi. Oh, this is nothing really. <laughs> oh, no, not nothing. Not, not nothing really. You came in here all fly and stuff, and you talking about not, not too much of nothing. <laughs> not too much. Hey, well, I'm glad to be here. Thank okay. you for welcoming me. Well, We're excited you that you're here. So, look, we like to do a little bit of a, a breaker. Um, so we like to ask, what would you rather? Okay. Oh. Um, would you rather super um, hero? Would you rather fly or be invisible? Uh, that's a good question. I think I would rather be invisible. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Me too. Like, I want to hear people's conversations. Stuff. I just want to walk in. And oh, you want to snoop in? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, and I hope you get it right because our last kiss didn't get it right. For me. Okay. Would you rather be Spider-Man or Batman? Batman. There you go. <laughs> See? What? Your, your former agent got Batman. it wrong. That's, that's how it started. That's what I'm saying. They don't understand. Batman, I was Batman as, yeah. we're not going to tell you how many uh, bed sheets I ran through with my mom's. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> that's how many weapons you got. Oh, Batman, you can fly. Y'all don't even want to hear that. That's, ri that's real. I'm not even joking about that. So yeah. did you get on top of the house with the cape on there? And did you break any limbs? No. I I think that's how my jumping got so good. Oh, okay. I could jump off of a house just like that. We, Me and my friends, we played. Now, they weren't so lucky. But... Uh, <laughs> Monkey see, monkey do, don't do. No, don't, and the one that started do, don't get hurt, do, but yes. the other ones do. Yes. Oh wow. Well, we so perfected it. Jumping off. Right, jumping yeah. off the house. Okay, so you have a good vertical. Yeah, I have. It's not bad. I could, I could touch the ceiling. Oh, that's easy. good. You that's said good. Easy. No, you just biased. No, nah, that's good. Well, you said, do I have a good vertical? That's awesome. I think that's pretty good to be able to touch the ceiling, right? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. I think I could touch it in the suit. But. But the thing out. is, when you were jumping from the house, that, that really didn't tie into the vertical. because no, you, you're, yeah, you're going oh, down. Yeah, Gravity you're going is down. pulling you down. Yeah, and, yeah so my journey, um, it all started, and it's coming out of my book, by the way. Okay. Um, it started with, you know, actually watching the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. Um, I was over at my cousin's house, and everyone's jumping and screaming. And this is actually when... Cowboys are winning those championships, okay. right? Uh, all you cowboy haters. Yeah, um, there you go. You hear that? But, I, you know, I looked at the TV, and I just internally, as a little kid, I just made a decision 
that's what I want to do one day. That looks yeah. very fun. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know being an inner city kid how I would get there, but I just knew that's yeah. something I want to do. Fast forward, going to high school, um, I had to make a decision. Yeah. You know, was I going to go to my brothers and cousins' high schools, Dallas Skyline, or was I going to go with my age group to Lincoln? Mm. So I made a decision to, to go uh, to Lincoln after, you know, the pep rally and <laughs> orientation. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this oh, is get convinced. definitely that yeah. band. Um, but what's crazy what, is I didn't get around to starting in high school until my senior year. Oh, wow. So a kid with a dream to play in the NFL didn't get around to even starting in high school until my senior year. In the 10th grade, I was about to quit football because it didn't look like what it looked like on TV with the Cowboys. That wasn't my reality. Uh, and I'm just like, maybe, maybe this is not for me. Yeah. And I had um, a mentor, a coach speaking to my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that was one of the things that changed the trajectory of, you know, my journey. Okay. We all talk about journey. Yeah. Um, I walked around uh, the block and I saw my freshman football coach in his yard and, uh, you know, we, we struck up a conversation and, he knew a little bit about what I was going through, mm -hmm. football. And um, I told him, I said, you know, coach, I don't think, I don't think football's for me and I'm, I'm a quit. He looked at me, he said, no, you're not. And I'm looking at him like. <laughs> I said I'm a quit. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. I just told you I'm a quit. He said, no, you're not. And he said, you know why? I'm, and I'm like, why? And he was like, because you're not a quitter. And so I kind of, we kind of paused. I'm like, okay. He said, you know, I know what's going on. He said, there are a lot of talented guys out there. And a lot may be faster, bigger, stronger, but you actually have something they don't. Mm -hmm. at, this, at this point, I'm thinking he's trying to rah rah me. And I'm like, what? He said, you have a work ethic. Yeah. That's the first time I heard someone say it like that. Yeah. And I'm like, work ethic, what do you mean? He said, well, a lot of these guys might be the coach's favorite. They might be fast, they might be strong, they might be big. He said, but you work for every single play. Yeah. He's like, you're not the fastest, you're not the strongest or biggest, but your work ethic is phenomenal. Yeah. He said, I guarantee you, and I think this is what changed the trajectory, he said, I guarantee you, if you keep up your work ethic, your hard work will outwork their talents yeah. and you'll get what you want. Mm. He didn't know at the time that he was telling me this, that I was thinking about the NFL. Yeah. So I said, I'll get what I want. Mm. He said, you'll get what you want. I said, I'll get what I want. He said, you'll get what you want. I said, okay. Yeah. So, um... I became known as that hardworking guy yeah. uh, that you were not going to outwork. Yeah. And that carried over to uh, me starting my senior year, leading the team in yards, catches, touchdowns, wow. getting a scholarship, uh, going to college. Now, from the college to the NFL, Going from high school to college, that's that's already a big jump. But yeah. But from going from college to the NFL, it's it's night and day. Yeah. Right. It's Starting night over. Day. <laughs> it's night and day. Um, I would say that you almost have to treat football like you're really married to it. You know, and it's just like when when people heard about Mike Tyson or someone training. It, it, Mike Tyson said the only things that I did was train, eat, sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in a way, it, it became that you know preparing uh, for the NFL because you know you got thousands and thousands of kids coming out of all these different schools, Division One, Division Two, and everyone's trying to make it onto 32 teams. Wow. And the the numbers aren't in your favor. Yeah. And uh, I went to a Division to school so you shave that in half even more yeah um so yeah i would say 
it, it takes it takes an, an incredible level of discipline. If you don't have discipline, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Hard work, uh, dedication, and uh, intelligence. Yeah. You have to you have to be smart because you'll they purposely put you in situations where they want to see how are you going to perform to under it. pressure. There so it's so and then coming out of high school, going into college, <clears throat> you. Um, you already had the work ethic. The work ethic paid off going at the end of your high school. I'm sure the work ethic paid off in college, but you had to turn it up a notch. So all of that, going into your, how many years did you do in college? Four. Four years. So then going into those four years of college, when did you know you were ready to declare to the NFL? And well, my, <laughs> my journey was, uh, it's, it was not the, the same journey it's it's incomparable yeah. to, to any the regular athlete's mm -hmm. journey of where they you go, know. you sign to a school, mm -hmm. signing day, and then you you play four years, and then you now you have your pro days and things all like right, that. And, and that. Yeah, yeah, it was different for me. I knew that I'm coming. I'm starting behind the eight ball, um, man. The college journey is a is a book <laughs> within itself, okay. but to condense it, I, I'll just say that basically it's a lose lose situation that you have to win. Mm. That's the way that I can explain it. It's a lose lose situation that you have to win, and so you got you have to put everything on the line, and you have to go all in. Yeah. And so for me, uh, one of the things that I did was. I went to my strength coach my freshman year in college and um, I told him like every other athlete who wants to go to the NFL, I said, my goal is to go to the NFL. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, I heard that before. A lot of people mm -hmm. said that. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I'm, I, I really want to go to the NFL. And um, he really, he didn't believe me at first, but then when I would tell him, your workouts are too easy. <laughs> I did that to challenge him. Yeah. And um, by no means was, was his workouts easy, mm -hmm. but um, I wanted him to take me to the very best that I could be. Yeah. Because if you, I understood at a young age that if I'm gonna have a shot at making it to the next level, I have to work on my strengths, I have to work on my weaknesses, and I have to do what the people at the top do. And so once he realized this kid is serious, it became an obsession. And we worked and we worked and we worked and we worked. And um, I got my opportunity to uh, play in a um, all-star East Coast Bowl. And uh, you know, you gotta run fast. As a wide receiver, yeah. uh, I ran a 4-4. Okay. And um, yeah. <laughs> he was booking it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was one of my slower times. Even though it's a <laughs> said, fast time, to... I've clocked much Fast. faster. But um, yeah, when when I clocked that, um, I clocked the four four and then the four three, and then once once I clocked that four three, the scouts were like, they "Hey, go crazy for it." It was like you did everything you needed to do, and uh, from there, it's uh, I was invited undrafted free agent to Cleveland Browns my rookie year. Good. So did um, once you got through that process, the cutting process, the um, so you're going to Cleveland. I don't know. Did you go through like a process where you were there for a while? Or did they like, you go there, you think, okay, I got the shot. Then you look up, they're cutting you. Yeah, no, I already knew, I already knew going in that if, if I get complacent, I'm gone. Yeah. You know, because I didn't get drafted in the first in the round. First, yeah, so one. I went in very focused knowing that nothing is promised and it does not matter what you did yesterday, you have to come and put your case together every single day because uh, that it's film doesn't lie. Yeah. And so for me, I think one of the things that woke me up early was seeing guys who went to these division one schools who played receiver, who had, you know, they were massive, much taller, much faster, 
you know, catching ability, they got cut. And I'm like, oh, right. my God. Right. They cut yeah. him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me get my bag. Oh, Lord. At any moment, I'm yeah. gone. I'm All like, right. man, you better, hey, you better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Make a case for yourself. Yeah. Because these guys, are, I'm like, man, that guy was good. And so for me, um, it, it, it plays with your mind because you're like, yeah. if they cut him, they have no problem cutting me. Right. So I better be on my, uh, you know, dotting my I's and, and crossing my T's. And then for me, um, I pick the veterans' brains. I, you know, yeah. I'm that type of guy who I look at my environment and I'm going to find every edge and every way to, mm. to, to make a case. And um, so, you know, I went to the veterans. What did you do to, 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 to be stay. in the NFL yeah. this mm -hmm. long? And they would, they would actually give you the advice. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most undervalued things uh, that athletes, uh, they, they miss because pride says, I got it all. I know all mm -hmm. the answers. Yeah. Right. Let me just rely on my athleticism. Not mm -hmm. necessarily, especially mm -hmm. when you see this USC guy mm -hmm. <laughs> packing. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, and mm -hmm. so uh, for me, I, I think humility plays a, a huge role in you uh, not only uh, making an NFL team, but but staying on the NFL team yeah. in addition to hard work and, and things like that. Stay in power. Yeah, it's yeah. good. My husband has a uh, athletic uh, wear company. Really? And one of his favorite slogans that he's made over the years is effort. Needs no talent. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like that My is the epitome ball. of you. Like yes. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean everything that you've spoken today just just feeds into that. Like get your mind together and put in the effort. The talent doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Talent get cut every day. Right. When effort beats talent. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's good stuff. And so you take that that mentality into your motivational speaking oh, yeah. and your fitness and stuff. So, who do you speak to the most? The youth or just like all all age groups or people that have just gotten out of the league? How do how do who do you speak to? When I say it's it's, it's literally, and and here's what I would say to to actually segue about my speaking you know when you talk about playing professional sports and can we talk sports and and there are so many sports out there you know you got football basketball golf track yeah. boxing mm -hmm. you know equestrian yeah. at the end of the day you have to and this is what a lot of people struggle with you have to know your identity it's mm -hmm. good to know your identity before you uh, get immersed in sports, let alone anything in life, because yeah. the higher you go, if you're not careful, you're, you will confuse your identity with something that you do and right. something with your skill level mm -hmm. at the pro level. Yeah. And so um, I understood who I was versus what I did. Okay. And football is a platform, it's what you do. Um, but it's, it, it helps you to uh, serve your purpose through the world if, if, you're, if you recognize that. Yeah. If you don't, you will struggle because once they say cut, right? Yeah. You'll think, wow. I, now what? I'm not right. valuable anymore. Yeah. What's my identity yeah, what's now? what's my identity? Oh my God, right. I was at the top I'm no now. One. Right. I'm out I'm of nobody. place, right? right? And so, you know, I've been a player who have, just like a lot of players, who've been cut. But a lot of times, uh, God says, when you get cut, that's actually when the action starts. Mm. Oh, that's a good <laughs> so, I like that one. So for me, I already knew my <laughs> gifts were to help people and to to speak encouraging things to motivate yeah. even on my team motivating my teammates encouraging my teammates 
And I noticed that that was something that came natural to me in life. And so once uh, I got into the fitness, I would say I didn't really choose fitness. It chose me uh, because of my goals in life, because I wanted to live a healthy lifestyle. And now people are inquiring, man, you're you're really fit. Yeah. And you really do it at a high level. Can you train me? And I'm just like, all right, let's go. And so from there, uh, coaches and, and different organizations asking me to come, hey, would you mind come speaking to our program? Would you come mind come speaking to our kids uh, who are struggling with X, Y, Z? And um, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, and a lot of times, you know, they say, well, we've brought in such and such and so and so, and we don't feel like they were able to get through. Get through to them, yeah. And one thing I know that to get through to someone, you have to be relatable. Because exactly. if you're telling me that I can do this or I can be this, and you've never been through what I've been through or experienced what I experienced, maybe I might take your advice. But I'm much more apt to take your advice if I've, if you've actually been through what I've been through, right. and you've made it there, and now you reach back and say, "Hey, I'm gonna show hey. you what I went yeah. through." Right. And now it resonates. Through. So, mm -hmm. uh, very passionate about that. Okay. Well, we have we have really enjoyed the information that you've given us, um, the journey that you went on. I know there's probably a lot more. You mentioned you have a book. As we close the segment, if you would like to speak or say something about or announce the name of your book when it's released or if it's out already. Um, we enjoyed the having you here on uh, Can We Talk Sports? And would, do you have an Instagram um, or any kind of social media you would like to let the audience know? Yes, uh, Facebook, Jonathan Hackerty. Instagram, In The Lab Working, I-N-T-H-E-L-A-B. W O R K I N work in right okay, the lab working because okay. I'm always in the lab working. I'm always in the lab working. I'm cooking. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we we enjoyed having you today and we appreciate you stopping by to come drop some jewels on us. <laughs> well, thank you, you so much you for having have us. You've given us so much good information. I hope that there are young men, young women out there listening and take what you've given to heart because it was good information. Really Thank good. Thank you. Effort needs no time. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. This Big Mama, you know it's the new season, new hair, new me. Uh, Big Mama got a new love. Anyway, I just want to come give you a few brief things. Now let's get this season started right. What, what, what is Big Mama's college team? Roll Tide. Not really an Alabama fan, but I am a Coach Nick Saban fan. So just want to let you know out there. Uh, my uh, NFL team, you know mama rolling with who there? It's the boo, baby. Nothing more than there for big mama. So, you know, we have a new stadium down there in New Orleans called Caesars. So, hey, we're going to see what that's all about this, this football season. Um, now, you already know, big mama is not, is not a Dallas Cowboy fan. But because I reside here in Dallas, I will give you the updates on those, as you say, your boys. Hmm, your boys. I've already heard it. Oh, it's our season. It's, this is the year. Here we go. Anyway, Big Mama bring you the highlights. Um, but after everything that I give you this season that we get started, I'm always going to leave you with a little nugget. So about life, it's hard, but it's fair. I want to thank you all for joining us for this segment of Can We Talk Sports. Um, we hope to see you on our next segment. And we want to thank Jonathan Haggerty. What a great show. Really good information. 
So follow us, Facebook, Instagram. So this is Mama D, um, Carmen, saying see you guys next time. And this is Arisha, AKA Icy. Make sure you join us next time. Let's go.